Many times I've been at the gym, my practice, and people will come up to me and they'll start talking. And they'll be talking as if they went to a funeral or something terrible happened. And they're going on and all of a sudden this wave of anger comes out of them. And I'll ask them, so what happened? They don't skip a beat, they don't miss a point with me, and they go on to tell me. Their girlfriend left them, their husband left them, but there's an undercurrent that comes out, and that's the X factor. And today we're gonna have a talk about your X factor, how to overcome heartbreak and build a better life. And this topic today is about, this session is gonna be about divorce, romantic breakups. You don't need to be married to feel heartbreak. But if you do go through a divorce, someone said to me once, it's like going to your own funeral and watching it. You're in it, you're feeling it. And I find in my practice professionally that people going through divorce, that's one issue. It's the unresolved pieces of that divorce that are timeless. Some people, I've had people come to my office and talk to me about their divorce, and I would think it happened last May. No, it happened in May of 1988. It's timeless. That's the X factor. People go, how did I get here? How did this happen to me? I had all these dreams, all these hopes. We were engaged, and two weeks before the wedding, he broke up with me. Or we were married for 24 years, and my wife comes home and slips an envelope under the pillow and says, um, I'm moving on. And you're devastated. You're reeling. And the person leaving is also real. Everybody in a breakup feels it. In every breakup, there's someone leaving and there's someone being left. And the X factor is the part of the breakup that we take with us. And I'll read you the definition. The X factor is the accumulation of lost dreams, broken promises, disillusionment, regret, emotional setbacks, disenchantment with past romantic partners, and the unrealistic expectations all make up our X factor. All these elements act together and also act independently and tend to be impairments impeding our ability to move forward to understand what's happened. I wanna come over, go over seven points of every breakup. You could go out for six weeks, six years, six months, 28 years, be married. And every breakup has, one, has these seven qualities to it. And the first one, endings are endings. And this is controversial and I get a lot of hate mail on this next comment. Every relationship has a time limit, an expiration date. It can last six weeks, it can last six months, six years, 60 years. Many times your relationship has gone past its expiration date and one of you know it, one of you don't know it. But endings are endings, and not to judge it that way. Not to judge it. Second is, there's no such thing as a relationship failure. There's relationship endings, there's lessons. The failure is not recognizing the gold within the relationship. What did you learn? How did it change you? How's it gonna change you? Number three, people underestimate the power of a breakup on both parties, the person being left and the person doing the breaking up. Both parties feel it. And I'm gonna talk more about that later. And when someone's leaving and someone's been left, two different dynamics, but equally is powerful for each person involved. The person feeling betrayed, maybe the person finally says, we can't live this way, it has to stop, or we really don't wanna be married, or we shouldn't get married. But someone blows the whistle and someone has to hear the whistle. That's the X factor. And also, they're emotionally severe. Breakups are emotionally severe. People ask me, why is it so tough? You know, there's an old saying, the sum total of your life are all your relationships. And I always like to add, the sum total of your life includes your romantic relationships. From the girl in first grade, or a guy that you had a crush on in middle school, high school, college, to your third marriage. Your life is accumulation of all these romantic encounters, connections. And number six, I'm gonna use the tennis court analogy. 
In every relationship, you can only own 50% of the relationship. You have to own 100 of your 50, but you're only 50% of it. You're not the sole reason your partner's suffering. They may tell you you're the only reason they're suffering, but you only own 50%. You have to own 100 of your 50, but you have your side of the tennis court. And number seven, when emotional pain is severe, and they break up, I see people who've dated for a short time who are hemorrhaging emotionally, or people who've been married for years. Emotional pain has no regard for gender, orientation, economics, education, zip codes. Emotional pain is what's gonna transform your life. And now's the time to look at what's going on in your life. And let's re-examine what is your X factor? What's the past relationships been like? What happened in this current one and where do you want to go?